G'day there, welcome to The Race Side. Today we will be doing a book review of the Star Wars book Brotherhood. Wait. The Star Wars book Brotherhood. Uh, this came out in 2022. I've only just got my hands on it and read it. And uh, this is gonna be my kind of fairly unfiltered thoughts about it. So this book begins fairly soon after Attack of the Clones. And of course it is centered around Anakin and Obi-Wan. And specifically the adventure mission or challenge that happens on Kato Nemodia. Now off the bat, just as a concept, I really love the fact that they took a single line from Revenge of the Sith of that business on Kato Nemodia you know, that doesn't count. I love how they took a line and made a whole freaking book out of it. That's just a cool concept. I love when Star Wars just like takes it one sentence and runs with it. This period of time is really cool. I'm really more fascinated with the time period for Anakin and Obi-Wan in between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, but nevertheless, this is prequel content, so I'm gonna lap it up. As I said, this book kind of follows uh, a mission that Obi-Wan is sent on by the Jedi Council to go to Kato Nemodia. There's been a massive explosion. They need to figure out who did it, whether it was the Separatists or the Republic, seeing as those two factions are now established in the Clone War. First up, the thing I noticed that I, I think I liked, I did, I, I did enjoy this element of this book by, the author, by the way, is Mike Chen. So I don't know if this was his idea, but each chapter would start from a perspective of one of the parties. It would be either Anakin Skywalker's perspective or Obi-Wan Kenobi's perspective. It would preface that at the start of each new chapter. So I, I liked that because then I could... There was kind of situations in the book where we were like they were apart, but it was still both their storylines. So it was easy to follow what like A and B story we were at. Now, the interesting thing about this book as well is, again, this just satiates like my prequel Clone Wars need of Star Wars content is, and you know, I'm filming this around the time of the new Bad Batch season three trailer. So Ventress has just popped up again in everyone's minds and everyone's talking about Ventress. And I get to talk about Ventress more because she is in this book, which I, I don't know if I just didn't read the back of it before I started reading it, but I just did not know. So when it got to the part where Ventress enters and uh, obviously she's already, well, not obviously, but she's already on Kato Nemodia. Uh, she's helping the Separatist side trying to figure out the Kato Nemodian disaster. Uh, and it started describing this like sleek, bald woman. And I was like, this sounds an awful lot like Ventress. And then it was Ventress. I was like, okay, cool then. But very cool character. I mean, needless to say, I'm very in interested to see how she's going to be in Bad Batch season three. To see her in a book is cool. It's, you know, it's around the era that we know her really well with. And uh, at this point, because it's so early in the Clone Wars, she is still Dooku's Padawan, uh, which is just, uh, you know, cool to see more of that content. If you have gotten to this part of the video and you want to read this book and you haven't yet, I'll try and sum it up in just a few sentences and then I'm going to go heavy in the spoilers. This is a really good action piece that has two of, you know, Star Wars' most beloved characters that really show more of their psyche and thinking and do really well to portray that in the writing. It, it was lacking a bit of fullness for me overall, but it's it's a good read if you love prequels, love Clone Wars, and love these characters. All right, now that the noobs are gone, now we can get into the book and the story and all the spoilers. Okay, first thing, again, this is unfiltered, this is unscripted. I haven't even made dot points to what I want to say here. But the first thing that comes to mind is that who is this Milne? Like this, this Padawan child? I was not confused with this storyline, but I was like like just dis not disturbed I can't even think of a descriptor for it but I just didn't love it straight away I'm, I'm such an Ahsoka fan I was like who is this Padawan that Anakin has a connection to uh and that he really got on with and I for some reason was super protective over that in the end of the book and it really is to like I think it's this last chapter the last chapter or the second last chapter where that relationship that Anakin has with this younger Padawan really comes to show why that was an important part of the book. I love it when things are contrasted in Star Wars against something that's polar opposite. So he's kind of semi-pinned against having to teach some Padawans or teach some younglings uh, some, you know, skills and lessons. And Mill is, is a character that comes up as a really, like, worried, anxiety, riddled, like, not sure if a Jedi is the path for her youngling that comes across Anakin's uh, kind of trajectory and that I, I kind of understand it. like putting it on paper it makes sense why this, these two characters were kind of pinned against each other not against each other but pinned uh, to be with each other for the storyline the one thing I think I really loved explored in this book is the idea that Anakin and Obi-Wan aren't a, you know master and Padawan anymore uh, Anakin is a master now and that just 
it, it feels like that should just be like totally fine. We're like, oh yeah, that just happens. But it actually explores that both of them need getting used to that dynamic. And I think that's kind of the main point of this book is exploring that dynamic. The you know the title the title of it, Brotherhood. I mean, I'll get to that in a minute, but it's like, does it really explore brotherhood? But I think what it does really explore is the fact that they're not master and Padawan anymore, but they're both masters. They're peers, they're friends, and trying to explore Obi-Wan and Anakin's relationship without being master and apprentice. The actual action that we have on Kato Nemoidia, which is a lot of the book, it's about two-thirds of the book, is Kenobi on Kato Nemoidia, exploring this disaster, this bomb going off. That is like the main plot point that like they're trying to discover what happened. It's, it's good. It's like a good concept. I just feel, and I kind of briefly said it before, it, it, it needed something a little more for me, I think. And, you know, by the time I got to the end of the book, I was like, oh, okay, so that was just the full, like, climax of the story. That was the full picture we were getting there. Again, I like the concept of it. Like, it's like this big, you know, this deep cut of Kerton and but it could have been more. The action was pretty cool. There's a few like, you know, extended chase scenes kind of on rooftop style, uh, which they did pretty well to do it in like word form, not visual media. But for me, I just needed a bit more fullness with the actual story points. That's probably the only thing that really lacked for me. Again, I think the character dynamics did really well. I think the exploration of Kenobi's inner thoughts of what he thought of Anakin, and it shows that he knows. He, like, so knows about Anakin and Padme from, like, the get-go. Like, I, it wasn't until I saw Clone Wars Season 7 that I was like, okay, Kenobi, by the end of the war, knew about Anakin and Padme. And obviously, by the time Revenge of the Sith, he knows. But in this book, he knows. And this is, like, three years before that. So, I, this guy, it, it's, it's really interesting that they do show a lot of his inner thoughts, inner workings of his mind, what, what Kenobi kind of is thinking about, musing about. And what he gets worried about is, is really interesting and how he actually handles that and how he is such a Jedi that actually has all those thoughts and feelings but really does well to put them aside to do what is needed at hand. Same thing with Anakin, but again, his storyline was kind of alongside having this youngling with him, which I, I still don't know if I super love, but it did show, you know, kind of his his growth and understanding of who he is as a Jedi and that he's not a youngling and Padawan anymore, but that he is a master and he does have a lot more responsibility. And that was really interesting. We got some really sweet moments in this book. It starts off really early on him and Padme hanging out together on Coruscant, which was lovely. Same kind of event, actually just going back to the Kenobi thought. One of the inner thoughts that Kenobi has was thinking about Satine and like Satine got name dropped in this book a few times. Not a massive deal, like like that wasn't a massive plot point, uh, but it was just like a few moments where like he likened, Kenobi likened his thoughts and feelings to Satine to what he thought Anakin was, is feeling for Padme, which I, I loved. Like that's such a sim like similarity, that's such a parallel. And that was like hinted at in the same way in Clone Wars, in that, in that Clone Wars episode where they're on that ship with Satine. Um, if you know, you know. It's the same energy. And I love that they they hinted that Satine kind of mind thoughtfulness for Kenobi. By the end of it, it just ends as like a classic adventure mission. They get to the end of it. They like reprimand the, the Nemoidian that was like evil in the end. And there was like one good Nemoidian and one bad Nemoidian. And it's kind of nice. I mean, we don't get enough of Nemoidians. It was actually interesting to see how Keta Nemoidia treats the Trade Federation and how they're quite an extremist faction in the Cato Nemordian like society. Just Cato Nemordian law. I, I didn't know I needed that, but it's super interesting. I think for a sweet taste of these characters and some sweet moments with Padme, Satine mention. If you if you can go if you visualize like what an arc in the Clone Wars season one feels like, like this is this book. Like it's it's a decent size, but it just could have been a bit more full. I, th I think it was very simple in its um, plot line and storyline, but maybe that probably aided in having so much time with the thoughts of each of the characters, which was the most interesting part. If you like the characters, you're going to enjoy it. If you want, like, hearty Star Wars reading and story, I it, it's kind it's halfway there. If I had to rate it out of 10, I'd probably give it a strong six and a half. That might seem low, but that's, it's kind of average. That's, it's higher than average. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I would love to hear your review and your nitpicks about this 
people. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope to see you in a live stream. So make sure you subscribe and like and hit that bell if you enjoyed this review. Thanks so much. My name is Hannah and always choose the race.